In this video, we're going to learn about absolute value. So our goal is, of course, I can find and interpret absolute value. Evidence-wise, we're going to have to define what absolute value is. Uh, we're going to find the absolute value of a number, and we're going to apply it to some real-life situations. Uh, we have quite a packed learning experience this time between a Freire model, some examples, and then you do's and things to remember. So let's just get right on into it. Our Freire model, and if you don't have guided notes, I would suggest writing this into your spiral. Pause it if you need. Uh, the word that we're going to define is absolute value. So as per usual, we're going to start off with some examples. First of all, the absolute value symbols, they're just two lines on either side of some value. And we can see a few of the examples where we use this. We have the absolute value of 7 is equal to 7. The absolute value of 1 half is equal to 1 half. The absolute value of negative 7 is still 7. And the absolute value of negative 0 0.23 is equal to 0 0.23. So the more observant of you may already see some sort of pattern here. Let's look at the non-examples. We've only got two really here. First of all, we're going to say that the absolute value of 6 is not equal. That's what that equal sign with a slash through it means not equal to negative 6. We're also going to say that negative 4.5, if we take the absolute value of negative 4.5, it is not equal to negative 4.5. So, what you're going to do, take a moment to think about what is an absolute value symbol actually doing? What is What are we doing when we take the absolute value of a number? For characteristics and facts, we have quite a few. Uh, the first and main characteristic or fact is it's going to be the number of spaces on a number line between the value and zero. And that's actually going to really closely tie it in with our definition. We're also going to say that it's always positive. Whatever we put in for an absolute value, it's always positive. It makes whatever is inside the absolute value signs positive. And again, it's always positive, or zero at least, um, if you take the absolute value of zero. So for our official definition, we're just going to say that the absolute value is the distance between a value and zero. And that's it. Pause the video if you need to finish writing this down, and then we're going to continue on. Let's actually practice finding some absolute values. So, we know that it's the distance between the value and zero. So if we want to find the absolute value of 4.5, and you'll notice I'm actually going to make these absolute value signs a little bit longer. That way it doesn't look like it says 14.5. Uh, anyway, absolute value of 4.5 First thing we're going to do is find where 4.5 is on a number line, which is going to be right here. And we're going to measure the distance between our value and a zero. If we count these up, we have one, two, three, four, and a half. So that means that the absolute value of 4.5 is just going to be 4.5. Now, you'll notice, of course, that one of our characteristics is it's just going to make whatever's inside here positive. Well, it was already positive, so it stays positive. We can do this with another example, and if you're wondering why are we doing this, if we just have to know that it makes it positive, we want to make sure we know why it makes it positive. Uh, one really important thing to know is that distances are always going to be positive. So if we're talking about distances between two points, those are always going to be positive. For example, if we've got a point here at negative 6, if we look at the distance from negative 6 to 0, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and it's very, very tempting to say, well, we're going in the negative direction, so it should be a negative 6, right? And that's wrong. Distances are always positive, so even though we're going in the negative direction, the absolute value of negative 6 is just going to be 
positive 6, because it is a distance. Let's look at another example. So this problem may look familiar. Um, if you watch the 2.3 video, it should look very familiar. Uh, suppose we have two fish in the ocean. We have the anglerfish down at negative 2,000 meters, and the goblin shark at a depth of negative 1,300 meters. This time, we're going to figure out which fish has a greater depth. And the key thing to realize here is that we're talking about a greater depth. That means we're going to try to figure out which one is the bigger number. Now, previously, we would have said that the goblin shark had the bigger number. And if we're just thinking about these two negative values, that is true. But, since we have the word depth here, that's usually going to mean that it is the distance from the sea level. So, if we think about a number line going this way, we clearly can see that the angler fish is further away from sea level, which would be zero. And what we can use to express that are absolute values. So if we take the absolute value of the depth of the anglerfish and the absolute value of the depth of the goblin shark, we can say that the depth of both of these are going to be 2,000 meters and 1,300 meters respectively. If we now compare them, we can say that 2,000 meters is greater than 1,300, which means that the anglerfish has a greater depth. So, a little bit different in terms of the kinds of word we, words we use, and that'll determine whether or not we need to use absolute value to help us think about this. So, in this you do, you have two problems actually. We have two different balances. Uh, we have negative $5.42, negative $5.42, and we have negative $35.76. First, we're going to think about which one has a greater balance. Which one of these two accounts have more money? And then which one of these has a greater debt? So the first part you don't actually need to use absolute value, the second part you might. Ready, go. So, things to remember. Absolute values are always going to be positive. Whatever is inside your absolute value sign is going to be positive because it is a distance, um, and distances are always positive. Additionally, they represent the distance between zero and the value. Again, it's a distance, which is why it's always going to be a positive value. We're going to leave you with some suggested practice problems. Uh, we have a table of eight different values. You're going to find the absolute value of each of those. Uh, the ones in red are going to be a little bit trickier, but if you think about what an absolute value is, they shouldn't be too hard. Final one uh, is another word problem. Uh, you're going to compare them explain using absolute values, otherwise there's no real point to it, is there? Thank you for watching. Good luck.